Folks, how you doing? We back with another hit show. I'm your man, you were guy. You here with the Actress Cut. I have another wonderful, very beautiful, very talented guest in the house, Ravel Davis. I'm so happy that she's here. Give me some love. Hey. I got a lot of wonderful friends. Thank you. <laughs> All my friends for coming through and sharing this experience here with me is, yeah. is, is so wonderful. So we're going to talk with her. She's got a lot of big things going on. She's been doing some big things. And from what I understand, you haven't been doing this very long, but you've been getting a lot of stuff like like Yeah, this. yeah. yeah. So it's going cool. well. Yeah, we'll it's talk going about well. that. It's going well. So with no further ado, go ahead and introduce yourself to okay. the people out here in the audience. Hi, my name is Raval Davis, and I am a full-time actress. I'm also a body confidence expert and a journalist. Where are you from? I'm from Washington, D.C. originally. Are you from D.C.? I am. Why did I think you were from Brooklyn? I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. Because I'm from D.C. I'm so, oh, I'm so. Don't, don't want to get that confused. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to get that confused. So how I know this young lady so we, we were in a play together mm -hmm. called Faith Under Fire. Faith Under Fire. Yeah, that, that was such a great play. True Faith story. Fire. Produced by LaJoyce Brookshire. Yes. And uh, this is how I got to meet her. She's very wonderful. She's talented. She's been doing a lot of big things. Uh, I, I want to know, when you were growing up, like, who did you... No, let's go back to this, because like I said, didn't you tell me that you had just started, like, really, really pursuing this like a few years ago? Yeah, okay, so professionally, yes. yes. Um, so I actually went to acting school for okay. high school. Yes, I went yes, to Duke yes, Ellington yes, School yes. of the Arts, and then in college also I went to Mason Grove School of the okay, Arts. Okay, okay, okay. But I graduated from the BFA program and I was scared and afraid to like pursue acting full time, mm -hmm. so I started working as a journalist. I created this career for like 10 years, and then I was just like, it's not what I want to do. Right. And I decided to become an actor a year ago. And so I've been acting professionally for one year. Wow, congratulations, because she is doing <laughs> big things. And you were in the journalism. I love journalism. I was actually going to go to Alabama State okay. for journalism, but I winded up, wound up going to DeVry studying computers. So, okay. you know, well, this is like two journal this worlds. Is journalism right this now. Is, this, is, this is definitely you're journalism. You're doing it. I, I, I love doing this. I love having this show to be able to have wonderful guests like you to come down and talk to us. Thank you. So so tell us, what, what, what was that moment when you were like, okay, I'm going to do this? Because I understand how you're doing something, you're in a career, you're not really too happy about it. That's why people call them jobs, you know? Mm -hmm. But I call what I'm doing a career because I love this and it's just, you know, there, there's really no limit to this. So tell us when you got to that point to when you decided to go full-time actress? Um, okay, so I can't say that I had the worst job in the world for one. I transitioned from being uh, a journalist into being uh, doing digital marketing in the music industry. So I was the director of digital marketing at Epic Records mm -hmm. at Sony, which was, you know, definitely not the worst job in the world. Mm -hmm. I've worked <laughs> with, you know, uh, Prince and Tamar Braxton Not bad work and for um, <laughs> you know so many people, uh, so many people, so right. many great artists, and that was fun. But I didn't get a lot of fulfillment out of it. Like I would literally just, I'd be working sometimes until like eleven thirty midnight. I'm like, why am I doing this? Like mm -hmm. I really don't even care. This company doesn't care about me mm -hmm. either. If I drop dead tomorrow, mm -hmm. I don't even know if. Epic Records and Sony's gonna show up at my um, funeral. Well, they definitely have a replacement for you that next the day. The next day, follow up on your paperwork, <laughs> the and next then they'll day. probably hire an intern or somebody to, for the full time position. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it was that, um, and I went to Tony Robbins. Do you know Tony Robbins? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I went to Tony Robbins. Unleash the power within. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. walked on fire like <laughs> Oprah. Literally walked on fire. I love it. And, you know, he takes you through this meditation of, like, what your life is going to be like if you do not pursue your dreams mm -hmm. and have to actually go after what you want. And I was when I saw that meditation in my mind, I was like, oh, no. Right. I got to go live my dreams. Right. So I started off just it being a thing in my mind. I wrote this story on Essence 
because I kind of wanted, I thought people were going to think I'm crazy. I'm like, all these people who have known me in the industry for 10 years are going to think I'm nuts because I want to be an actor. Like, I'm like, this girl is crazy. So I'm like, let me just go ahead and just put it out there so everybody can know and mm-hmm. just fully think I'm fully crazy and nuts. Mm-hmm. And I, it's not a thing where I have to have multiple conversations with people. I'm just going to write a story about it. On essence, <laughs> I'm becoming an actor. And and I actually, the story was about how I was inspired by... Um, the women of Orange is the New Black, mm-hmm. specifically Danielle Brooks, right. because they're curvy girls. And I had this thing in my mind that... Shout out to Danielle. Yes, I love her. Yeah, Ooh, she's great. She's so awesome. <laughs> um, I had this thing in my mind that I couldn't be a successful actress um, because I was black and because I was a curvy girl. I'm not skinny. Mm-hmm. And when I graduated from college, you pretty much you had Halle Berry, you had Angela Bassett, and it was like, if you're not Halle Berry or Angela Bassett, where do you mm-hmm. fit in? There was nobody really on TV that looked yes. like me, except for Queen Latifah. Yes. You know, and yeah. the queen, I mean, she's in a category yeah. by herself. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, I just kind of felt like it wasn't a place for me. But when I saw Orange is the New Black, I saw those women. I was like, all these curvy mm-hmm. women of color mm-hmm. looking good mm-hmm. in starring <laughs> roles. Mm-hmm. Like, I can do this, yeah. you know? And, it's, and it's, it has really changed within the recent years, too, with the... Yes. A lot of the uh, leading black ladies that we have, you mm-hmm. know, the Viola Davis, mm-hmm. Kerry Washington, yes. you know, just uh, uh, Simone Missick. Mm-hmm. Um, just Who it's, I love it's, her. It's, it's, it's a lot out there, you mm-hmm. know, and the roles are changing too. The roles are are, are more important roles. They're not just that the the the, the friend, the, yeah, the friend or or the ghetto girl mm-hmm. or the, the ratchet coming girl. Coming in. Doing None all of this. that is, is lead right. roles are playing detectives and yeah. doctors and and presidential aides mm-hmm. and you know and the show is basically really about you you know yeah. I, I think I think that's great man I I think that the way that Hollywood especially Black Hollywood has been going in the last several years I would really say within really the last three four years has mm-hmm. really skyrocketed it's mm-hmm. a lot of lot of new Black shows out there the breaks mm-hmm. the get down. Um, get down cage. So cool. mm-hmm. Get down was good. I this is us, which is not a technically a black show, but there are yeah. yeah. There's, there's a significant lead. Probably more blacks will watch yeah. it than whites. <laughs> I mean, no, I think it's probably equal. But you, you have you know that black family on there that is you know they're they're in the major roles mm-hmm. in, on the show, and it's such a good show. It, it is a good show. Whoever watches it, whoever writes I it, I love it's a good show. this. Is us? It's so good. I'm I crying. haven't seen that yet. What? Get not, your you Kleenex box ready. Oh, uh, well, see, if I'm going to be crying, I can't watch it. You know, I'm a man. I don't cry. I ain't sensitive. <laughs> Listen, you're going to cry. <laughs> a lot of people have actually been telling me about that, it's about so that good. show. You know, the guy, um, you saw uh, The People versus O.J. Simpson yes. with Sterling, um, what's his last name? Sterling Brown, I mm-hmm. think. Um, he is in, he's the father in the show, the father and the I'm going to have to catch it. Because it's been on. Maybe I can catch up on On Demand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go back and watch, which is good. So you can cry all in one day. It's not like you're going to be crying every week. Just get it out at once. You can just go through it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm (laughs) going to get my Haagen-Dazs ice cream and my little teddy bear and I'm just going to vent. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's it's good. It's just so good. So so yeah. so, what are some of the shows, and who are some of the some of the actors and actresses that you like nowadays? That's Ooh. doing their thing. Um, so like I said, I love Danielle Brooks. Um, there. Oh, so I went to go see The Color Purple on Broadway, mm. which Danielle Brooks was in, and Cynthia. I don't know how to say her last name. Arivio. She's got the blonde hair. She's got an amazing voice. Mm-hmm. Um, I know who you're talking about. Oh my God, I love her. I'm obsessed. Um, who else? Am, who else do I like? Um, the woman who plays. You're like I don't know. That's why I asked you. Um, I love Priyanka Chopra. Yes. Yes. Who's <laughs> representing for the Indian girls? I love her. Um, yes. I love all the women on Orange Is the New Black. Um, I love them all. They're awesome. Great they're girls. all they're awesome. Great girls. Yeah, bringing it. You know, I had Taryn on the show. You, which one is Taryn? Taryn plays Pensatucky. One okay. of the heroin addicts that was oh that yes. she does the line and she was driving the 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 yes the, I yeah, remember yeah. her yeah. Ooh. shout out to Taryn I love Taryn hey Taryn yeah y'all so. are killing it on that show and uh, what else do I love right now oh my goodness um what's his name Michael K Williams I mean he's not new or anything but the guy that played in Creed 
No, Michael K. Williams wasn't in Creed. Was he? It? Well, I mean, his his breakout role was in The Wire. Oh, 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 oh! I'm sorry. And, I was, um, I, was who, I forgot to do. I, who are you thinking is, about? Is, I think that guy's name is Michael too. I'm sorry if it's not enough. I forgot the one that played in. Uh, oh, Michael B. Of, Michael B. Jordan. You're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. All these Michael. Oh, I like Michael, Michael, Michael B. Jordan too. He's cute. <laughs> hey, hey, the Creed one. That was a good movie too. <laughs> It was good. It was it was good. And the director of um of that of that movie, what's his name? Who um also directed God, now I can't think of it, but the director. The the male director, African American male director. The African American male director who (laughs) directed that 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 show that she liked. (laughs) (laughs) It's terrible. (laughs) You know, sometimes your mind goes blank. But um, it happens. Yeah, happens. there's so much great thing. So much. I I saw Moonlight. Mm-hmm. Did you see Moonlight? I didn't. How did you How did you feel about that movie? I, but you Ooh. know what? I, I I saw like the little different excerpts from like each part of the movie, how it was broken down, mm-hmm. and it was really interesting. And you know the parts that I seen were 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 really well written and well acted. Uh, I think it was also well cast. You know, mm-hmm. so I, I am looking forward to, you know, seeing it very soon. And I, I know it did very well at the Golden Globes this year. It did well at the Oscars. It won Best, Best Picture, Picture. Which is amazing. That was very I awesome. didn't even think that. I mean, it's such a beautiful, like, it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing that I thought is so cool about that film is that um, it's it's obviously super interesting, um, super interesting subject matter. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's also just like really beautifully shot. Like yeah. they're shooting in Liberty oh, City. Yes. And it is like the yes. most beautiful place. Like I want to live in Liberty City now. Like yes. I mean, they're literally in the projects, and it's just like this is beautiful. Like the color, the way it was shot, yes, the cinematography yes. is really amazing. The music, the use of music, and the use of water. I just like I'm so I love Moonlight. It was so good. Like I, when I watched it, I went to the screening, I, and the director was there. We got to ask him questions, and um, I think his his story and the screenwriter's story is so interesting. And I mean, it's it's a heavy movie. Mm-hmm. Though. It's heavy. Mm-hmm. I heard it was, and I'm really I'm really looking forward to see it because I like the uh, the guy. Uh, Mar, what's his name? Marsha. Oh, uh, Marshala, Marshala uh, yeah. Ali. I'm yeah. probably massacring yeah. that. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. He's so good. And he killed it. In, I wish you could have. I wish you could have lasted longer in Luke Cage, brother. Let me just say, I'm n- nervous for Luke Cage after he's he's dead. I mean, they better bring him back from the dead or something. <laughs> I'm nervous for the whole show. They, they. I, what are they I, gonna do? I don't. I don't think they should have killed him off that quick. That was like what episode six. I'm like, no. I, I'm like, after they killed him, I was just like, all right. Well, I'm not interested in seeing the rest of this. <laughs> I could turn this off now. I'm good. I mean, he was up in there monologuing in front of his Biggie poster with his. Yes. And I always tell my wife, I'd be like, babe. Whoever is dressing him got him fly as hell. <laughs> like the fresh vest and the ties and the suits. Yeah. I was like, I need that stylist. They had that brother sharp. He was and sharp. sharp uh, and he won, what, best? Uh, Supporting. Support- mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So good. He's so deserving of and that. And he won something at the Golden Globes, too. He really, he, he went, really. Yeah, he did win something at the really Golden Globes well. also. Um, I mean, he did an amazing job in that film. Yeah. Talk like that's a really complex character that he played, and he like nailed it. You got to like, you got to own that. those characters, you know. With being an actor, actress, you, know, you really have <gasps> so to good. you have to own that character, you yeah. know. You really have. to. It was such an interesting character too that he played. Yeah, so. I'm, yeah, I'm definitely gonna watch it soon. Definitely gonna watch mm-hmm. it soon. Hidden so. figures. Too, I heard that, that one. I, you haven't seen Hidden Figures. I'll be behind on everything. Get your I'm life together. So, so, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> my priorities are not straight. I'm sorry, <laughs> Hidden Figures. I will be giving you my money at the box office shortly. <laughs> yes. Soon, very soon. So tell, tell the people some of the things that you've, that you've done, because I know that you've done a lot of things. And yeah. And working with Dark and Lovely. And, I am. Yeah, hashtag so us, hashtag yes. I am Dark and Lovely. Yes. yes. Um... So, I mean, I've been doing a lot of commercial campaigns, which is cool. And um, this one, the Dark and Lovely campaign, actually, they just released the, I think this is our third part of the campaign. Um, 
and actually star is uh, Tayana Paris is also in it. Do I say her name right? Tayana Paris from um, Dear White People mm. and Survivor's Remorse and all of that. So that mm. was exciting to work with her. Um, and all of the other fabulous black women with natural hair in mm -hmm. that whole campaign. It's really dope to work with um, Dark and Lovely because I feel like they really get um, women of color and... Dark and Lovely has yeah. been around for a while. You know, they have, my, 45 years. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. my, you know, my mom is a cosmetologist back in Michigan. That's how I got into okay. doing hair. You know, and... Uh, always it was some dark and lovely products absolutely it's always through the house you know yeah. just, my sisters use it my sisters still use it they daughters mm -hmm. use it that, that's that's it's great. a staple and now they have the all natural line yeah so that's what i you know i'm a part of that campaign with the natural hair and that's what i like now i like that that the hair companies now are realizing you know more people are wearing natural hair and mm -hmm. coming out with products to uh enhance and benefit the natural hair and the different hairstyles that we have. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Love them. And, 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 and what else? I know you're doing the theater. Tell us about some of your other campaigns that you're doing. Yeah, too. so I mean, um, literally the first thing I ever booked, which was a year ago, was um, a Jeep Cherokee Auto Nation commercial, which that was really cool. Went to Florida and shot that. I saw that. That was fun. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> and then I did um, the Essence Festival commercial, which I love Essence. I actually have written for Essence in the past, and I just love the Essence brand. So the fact that I got to be in their, I think that was their first national commercial that they had um, done, like a scripted commercial. So mm -hmm. that was really exciting. Um, I recently, what else have I been doing? We did our play. You did a play. Um, goodness, I've done. You ever? You always doing something. So much. I, 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 I always <laughs> see her. I always see her doing something. She's always doing something different. I'd be like, look at my girl, and I always like and share. Thank I'm, you. Because I'm not a hater. I love when my peoples be doing good stuff. Thank I, you. I, I, I love it. I love it. It's it's great, and this is this is what it's all about. Yeah. So. Um, oh, I did the NBC showcase. That was like a really big. Oh yeah, deal. that's right. You did that I did the too. NBC was, showcase, which was really exciting. Um, so that's basically when um, NBC selects, you know, who they think is next and cool. They select. I think there was maybe fourteen of us um, that they selected actors who who are like on the come up. The, mm -hmm. the, the next crop of um, yeah, that's talented major right people. There. Yeah, it was really big. Um, this is my obviously I'm a new actor, so this is my first time applying, and like thousands of people apply all over the country. And like one of the girls who actually got through, she's like, "Girl, it's like my seventh time applying." <laughs> I'm like, "Well, you made it through, but for me to have made it on the first time I tried to have made it through, you literally go through rounds and rounds and rounds of auditions. Mm -hmm. It's really nerve wracking. They'll send you like a script." at 11 and be like, okay, can you come in at 10 tomorrow mm -hmm. with this script? And you're like, I'm at a Beyonce concert right, right. now. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, you on your phone, like, did they just send me a script? I'm trying to watch right, Beyonce. Right, right. Like, you interrupted my Facebook Live. Come on. You know, <laughs> exactly. You know I got to uh, live live uh, Beyonce uh -huh, now. Uh -huh. um, so it was all of that. It was really intense, but I made it through. Had a lot of fun doing that. That was great. Very made great nice. people. And that's opened so many doors for me now. Right. Um, I actually did um, a show on Discovery. On I'm sorry, on ID mm -hmm. um, recently. I've been in for The Blind Spot and... Um, I went in for a general with CBS, which mm -hmm. that was really cool. I mean, like, Very these nice. are, like, things that don't really happen right. in a year right. for people. So I'm right. very, very grateful. Some people grateful. work, uh, like, years and, and never do, like, half the things that you've done in your year. I mean, when you have it, though, you have it when that aura is around you. And like you said, you made that decision. Yeah. And once you put your mind, that's all you focused on. That's your energy. That's your mm -hmm. karma. That energy that you put back out into wanting to grow in your craft and then your skill, you're gonna get that back and you will be rewarded just like you are. I know, right so now. good. So, so God is the bomb. Yes, yes he is, the bomb.com yes. God. Yes, he is. He is so good. <laughs> <laughs> so with your journalism background, mm -hmm. are you looking to get into doing any writing? Would you like to start writing plays or writing screens, uh, scripts, what would you like to get into with this journal? Because, you know, I write too, and yes. so I'm, I'm working on some stuff too, but what would you like to do with your journalism as far as being in this 
being in the century, how would you like your journalism to take a path? Yeah, um, so I still write. Um, I write more about like what's going on in my daily life. I contribute for the Huffington Post and the Grio and a bunch of other places, Essence and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I do want to take that right into the next level, right? So I have a couple of scripted um, ideas that I'm working on very slowly. But I also, uh, myself and um, my producing partner, Samora Suber, that feels so good to say my producing mm -hmm. partner. We mm -hmm. haven't, pro well, no, we actually have produced a few things, online things. Um, but we're in the process of uh, pitching a few docu-series to networks now, so. Very nice. That's really Very cool. Very nice, that's awesome. Yeah, like, you know, just com coming up with cool concepts and um, pitching those to networks that will be able to, especially around women and people of color, we're really interested in, you know, it's a lot sure. of different, lot of that. different new television networks out there, and a lot of mm -hmm. networks that are specifically for women. Like Oprah, Oprah is always wanting yes. new, new programming. Oh. Uh, you got uh, <clears throat> Lifetime, but you got yes. like on my on Centric demand channel, too is Centric? now the oh, first yeah. network for African women for women. African American yep. women yep. that actually yep. says it because it's a lot of networks yes. out here trying they, to but get. They but Centric it. is like we are. Yeah, <laughs> and like, I like Centric. They I, have right. good stuff on it. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're definitely. And so it it stuff. is definitely it's definitely a lot of outlets for you to be able to you know get your work and, and see that's what it's all about now. It's all about getting our works out there, really having our voices heard, being portrayed through the works that that we manifest through writing or through acting. Because you know, like we both know, it, <clears throat> black actors, you know. Even ten years ago, mm -hmm. were not even close to getting the roles. Maybe if you were Denzel or Will right. Smith, there or something was only like one that. or two. Like there were, yeah. there it wasn't just like yeah, come one, come all kind yeah. of thing. No, now it's a lot, and you know everybody has their own production companies, and you know really, I, I think that's yes. why we're getting a lot of good content too because we're producing mm -hmm. our own stuff. Oh, we Regina have King, so that's much, another one. Yes, oh, I, I love, love her. Regina King, and she just got. Um, she's, I think, just got a produce, production deal with, um, I forget which network, but one of the major networks. Well, she should have. She's awesome. Yeah, she is. I've been watching her since 227. Right? <laughs> but do, do I you love know her. That she does the voices for Yui and Riley on the Boondocks. Ah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I yep. did not know that. Yeah. I love her. She is super talented. Oh, my goodness. I auditioned for... Um, a new show that she's working on for Netflix. Oh, I haven't heard back yet. Let's keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> Don't worry, it's coming. Let's keep our fingers crossed on that. Um, but I was like, oh my God, I couldn't even imagine. Like, I would love to work with her. Right. You know, to right. be across from her having a conversation on camera. Like, she's right. so intense <laughs> and like, I'm like, yes, girl, I want to have that moment. She definitely brings it. She brings she it. She definitely brings it. You know, I think one of her funniest roles, I loved when she was in uh, Boys in the Hood. Mm, <laughs> mm -hmm. With that lollipop and those braids. No. Oh and her crop top. Oh, my she, she was so authentic, right, though. Right, right. You know, like, it wasn't a caricature. It was real. Yeah. You know, so. She's like, I was doing this before I, before I was acting. Yeah, right here. <laughs> this, this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. Yeah, because I believe she's, like, really from L.A., like, for real. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's awesome. Just yeah, I, I I I really I really that's why I was asking because you know with the different shows and stuff that we have on and how black characters are being portrayed now in a more positive sense and in more deeper roles. Like I I I just you know I think we need more shows like that. We need more black writers. We need more black producers. We we need it. Or it, it, it not just to single out black, but yes, because we want to hear ourselves. We know that sometimes yeah. we haven't had, you know, those advantages that uh, other people have had in this industry. Mm -hmm. But I want to see everybody do good. I, I, I have tons of friends in this industry, and I, I want to see everybody's work get produced and stuff. But diversity. I really, yeah. I'm, I'm all for diversity, but I really want to see us do our thing because yeah. we we're so talented. Yeah. And I think we have so many stories and so many different stories that people haven't heard. Mm -hmm. um, 
one of the questions they asked at the when I was they do this little video for the NBC showcase before um, you actually do your piece and one of the questions they asked is like you know what would you like to see change about the industry and I was like well specifically about like people of color like black or specifically black people I would love to see you know things other than I mean we can sing you know I love the new edition mo movie mm -hmm. that was great that was a good real movie. story yes you know that like was good. I love those I you know um, 12 years a slave absolutely that's a re that was mm -hmm. real life yes but I would just love can we just talk can we one day have a movie about Queen Hatshepsut you know like can we talk about Queen of Sheba because you know sh can we can we talk about that because that's our history too and mm -hmm. those are stories that haven't mm -hmm. really you know we haven't seen that part of our our story mm -hmm. right so there's just so many stories I think that we haven't had a chance to share we kind of get put into a box of like oh we're gonna tell the story of the black man who ran who who grew up with no father right you know and it's like okay that is this mm -hmm. but so does a lot of other stuff you know a lot of important other stuff yeah that from our background that we can really have great stories about great movies and just it, it's, it's so much with us mm -hmm. you know it's so much with us and it's we're I, complex yes very complex and dynamic and dynamic and all the stuff <laughs> that she's saying times infinity we are I, I, I wake up every day and I say, thank you, Lord, for making me this wonderful black man that I am. And then I go about my day being hey. a black man, achieving and progressing in a positive manner every day. Amen. Every day you wake up, you have an opportunity <laughs> to do something different. Every day I wake Sometimes I be telling my wife, I'll be like, she'll be like, why do you stay up so late sometimes? Because I'll just be up like. 3.30, 4 o'clock. I'll just be thinking about stuff like, okay, what's my next move in this? Mm -hmm. Or how can I do this? And, you know, I might fall asleep catching that, but I wake up and I have so much running through my mind about what's going on now, about what I want to do and stuff. And, and, and it has a lot to do with, you know, what I'm working on now with the television and the media. And uh, I don't know. It's, 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 it's never ending. You have to be very resilient in this industry. You do. You have to be resilient and you mm -hmm. have to have patience. And, and, be you, creative. and you can't be sensitive. You have oh, to yeah. you have to be able to, you know, be able to deal with the word no. That's it, it happens. It happens like ninety nine times yeah. out of a hundred times the yeah. answer is no. <laughs> yes. But my whole you know, I'm fine with you saying no because it's like clearly if you're telling me no, you're not the person I need to speak to. Exactly. You know, let me I need to speak to the person that's about to exactly. say yes. So where is she? <laughs> where is she? Like I need to talk to the yes in the room, you know? <laughs> Oh my God! So, this yeah. has been a great interview. Thank you for coming down Thank and being my wonderful guest. Thank you for having me. I love this lady, she's <laughs> awesome. Go ahead and give them your information where they can book you, where okay. you know, they can reach you, all your social media, all that good stuff. Sure. Um, so my website is RavalDavis.com. It's www. R A V as in Victor A L Davis D A V I S dot com. Um, and then all of my social media handles are at Raval Davis. So just at R-A-V-A-L Davis. That's nice and simple. Yeah. I'm on Instagram. That's my thing. I'm, you know, you can DM me. You can hit me up. I see, respond. You, you go to her Instagram, you'll be able to see all the stuff that she does. I'll it's be true. Like, oh, it's she true. It There's again. a lot on there. I She's also awesome. am doing a lot of voiceovers oh, lately. Very nice. Yes. So that's, that's exciting. Very nice. Yes. When you very when you nice. hear the new Coles Under Armour ad, it might sound familiar. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank yeah. you again for coming down. Folks, thank you for tuning in again to the Actors Cut. I'm your host, Hubert Guy. This is Ravel Davis. Look her up, RavelDavis.com. Yes. The Actors Cut. The Actors Cut. Peace. Mm -mm. <laughs> awesome. Wait, we ha I have to take a picture and do yes. an IG video. Yes. And wait, can I move with this thing? Oh, oh. Let me let me go stop my uh, <clears throat> stop this tape. Really okay. Quick. Mm-hmm.